Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to The Good, The Bad, and The Geek. Today we'll be talking about Brie Larson's smash hit Captain Marvel and why it's almost as good, maybe as good, as Green Lantern. Take that, hater boys. <laughs> Did you know that we are uh, proud members of the It's All But Done Presents Network? Well, speaking of the network, do you have a vague remembrance of bare naked ladies from the late 90s and early noughts? If you do, then you're in good company. Join friends Evan and Saker as they hazily stumble through every single Bare Naked Lady song like I am this reading. One week at a time, from the first album to the last, driving themselves ins crazy. It says insane, but that, that's, that's horrible punnery. The song's called Crazy. Along the way, do you know everything about b and or anything about b and I already fucked it up. That's probably more than they do. Strap in for pet theories about vampires, retirement homes, murders, and more with It's All Been Done, a Bare Naked Ladies podcast. Check them out along with our programs at ibdpresents.com and support us at patreon.com forward slash IABD. You can also check out Eric's website at ericsternberger.com. You can also check out solongstargazer.com. Becky at Becky.com. <laughs> no, sorry. Actually, do not go to that. It's probably nothing to do is. with Becky. It's not me. Uh, it's probably bad. It's, it's just probably, a, it's it's just a very bunch of pictures of oh, hair. dang. <laughs> <laughs> That's my favorite line delivery in any movie is Greg Kinnear and, and, uh, and Mystery Men, where he just realizes, he's like, oh, I'm going to die. And he's like, oh, dang. <laughs> and he just evaporates. I was just like, it's like the best delivery. Oh, I like the Mark Evan Jackson and King Kong. Oh, yeah. No. <laughs> that He's movie, about to get stepped on. That movie is also fucking uh, Kong Skong, where the guys get, like, the bamboo shorts are also, like, the legs of the thing. I remember, because I was like, I'm a kaiju fan, and I'm expecting some shit on that island, but, like, when that's, it got really gory, I was just like, not expecting that. <laughs> not expecting that. Like, I was with one of the guys from my wedding, and he was with the movie. We, we both did, like, one of those... Like, the, uh, this, another, is a, this is a gory movie. <laughs> another, another Brie Larson, uh, Samuel Jackson jam. It was. It was. They besties now. Besties. They besties. Maybe they did earn that buddy cop. Really yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it just transcends <laughs> film. Uh, uh, just a uh, heads up, uh, our official sponsor of the show is Audible with over 200,000 titles to choose from. Get a three-day membership, free plus a book to get you started. One credit a month after trial, good for any book regardless of price. You keep your library... A bunch of other stuff. It's really cool. Um, if you're interested, just, you know, commit to it. It's great. You go to audibletrial.com forward slash good bad geek. <laughs> Here's the thing. Everything, uh, everything I've looked for is not anywhere where I can find it. And so we're, this is just all randomness. <laughs> so, like, I just found a file and went, oh, this is just going to be a pure shit show. Hey, Nick, how long is the best you've done a podcast? It's been a long time. <laughs> a long, long <laughs> time. It's a naked ladies off opportunity there. It's been a long time. Oh, <laughs> God. So I'm taking improv it's class bad. right now, and like it, 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 it's, it's nice that I don't do this uh, anymore. Clearly not for me. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. I just remember it's like one of the exercises was like, look at your partner's eyes. Now, your partner, person A, I'm pointing to Nick Ray, person, he's person A, I'm person B, person A, just start talking about him. And I'm like, okay, person B, don't fucking respond. Don't acknowledge anything he fucking says. Just blankly look at him and listen. And so I'm looking at halfway through, I'm like, am I nodding at all? Am I paying attention too much? How do I not nod at him? And then, and then now. Does everyone smell toast? Does everyone smell toast? Am I having a stroke? Person B, all right, now regurgitate everything he just said back to you. And I'm like, Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> and so literally, it became a I'm a looky doopy doo! Right! And so it's like now, person you A, it's your turn Not to about share me. with person A. And it was just more like, I have a shit memory. I don't remember things well at all. And he got it perfect. And I was like, son of a bitch! <laughs> and it was just like, it's to the point where I was just like, I'm laughing because I was like, fuck this. Yeah, it was just really. So anyway, we had a great show playing for you. Uh, we got uh, Nick, Eric, Becky. We're going to talk about Captain Marvel. We're going to talk about just all kinds of fun stuff, tons of nostalgia, tons of 90s stuff. And, of course, we're going to break down the timeline for the test rack and much more. Stay tuned. <laughs> We're here to 
talk about Captain Marvel, the new Marvel movie. And, well, let's just go around. We'll, let's just, uh, we'll start with you, Beth, and we'll go counterclockwise. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty good. What your overall thoughts are of the movie? I loved it. Awesome, like, multiple awesome female characters. Really, like, it was nice seeing Nick Fury be just a dude and not, like, some shadowy spy figure. And an excellent use of 90s music. Okay. All right. I like it. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, Becky. <laughs> No, it, okay. I've never seen it yet. So he did. He did Facebook message me. and was just like, should I see it a second time? I have thoughts. And I was just like, and that could be taken both ways. Oh, yeah. score. <laughs> no. So yeah. like, yes. if he said that to me in person, I'd be like, oh, there's some sarcasm there. Is probably there. Probably are. But like, they're you know. Yes. Uh, on general though, I really liked it. I think it's a upper mid Marvel movie for me. Yes. I feel the same way about it as I did like Black Panther. Where I feel like he was more important than good. Okay. But it was still a lot of fun. Uh, yes. It had, I had a hell of a lot of fun in the theater. Thinking about elements after the fact made me kind of go, oh, wait a minute, and, and a few things. Oh, yeah. And which is something we'll get into, and I'm going to say it before anyone else can use it. It's about uh, winked at the future a little too much. Okay. And that is okay. a fun. Yeah. Okay. All right. Now I'm, I'm with you. Nick, sir. So... My biggest problem with this movie. I really liked it. No, I'm, 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 no, uh, I thought the movie was great. Uh, it was a lot of fun. I had a lot of fun watching it. I really enjoyed Ben Mendelsohn played his role so well. Like he really oh, yeah. did such a good job of, of emoting under all of those prosthetics. Like for crying out loud, that was and glasses. Yes. Oh, yeah. And glasses, yeah. He doesn't need those. It was really, it was really, really well done. Yeah. I, I would agree. Like, upper mid, ah. I was thinking closer to mid tier. Like, yeah. I don't know if it's in the Well, top. here's the thing. Here, here's the problem is that it's every awesome. time we do one of these, our, our quietly, I mean, we talk about it a little bit, but our MCU list starts to shift and mold. Yeah. So it gets into. I, I never have a hard list though. I always have kind of like a. It's some, nebulous. Yeah, it, yeah, it's kind of. Yeah. You know, I have may, maybe a favorite, and I have like, like maybe four or five that are like, oh, oh fuck yeah, I'm gonna watch that. It's on. Yeah. And there's a whole bunch of them that I'm like, you know what? I'm, why not? There's none, honestly, that I'll just turn off. Not um, even the Incredible Hulk. I mean, that is the least. Was that officially Marvel? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Wait, yeah. which, is that the one with Ed Norton? Ed Norton, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, that, that's one that I'll, you know, I might do a more laundry than the others with. <laughs> sure. Yeah. That, that, that's, that's how you can tell. Yeah. Well, I do laundry. Yeah. yeah. During this. No, but or I, I'm going to lose three hours. I, I mean, if, if you'd say, like, oh, no, which way does this rank with, you know, these other four whatever ones that I've put in the same range? Right. I don't know. Yeah, so I don't have a, I, I know it. Mine's probably in the middle, but I because I like I felt like Black Panther was a better movie than Captain Marvel, but I feel it's yeah. just as important as Captain Marvel in terms of yeah. what it was trying to do. I I enjoyed it, but I enjoyed it the second time I saw it. The first time I think I was just bothered because we had these two idiots next to us at Lennox that were just like critiquing the movie. Mm. Like, they were making fun of the Stan Lee intro. What? And I was just like, Hi. how could you fucking make dude, fun of that? Dude, I, I, got, I, got, I, I started clapping and got my entire yes. theater to clap for that Like, one. Yeah. Uh, so. Yeah. It, that, that right. Was yeah. yeah, I was like, shut up. I'm not crying. You're crying. I know. Like, yeah. great. I'm going into the... My, my wife went over. She's like, the movie just started. I'm already teared up. Yeah. Bit. I was yeah. just like, yeah. oh, I know. I was like, I know. <laughs> that, I mean, that, that might be a detriment, though, the fact that that was the most emotional I got for the entire movie. Was yeah. That <laughs> well, so so but I. How can you not? Yeah. I mean, so that's I'll, a real person. I'll talk about something that I guess was a very. It's a pro, but it was also a con for the movie, because I felt like so my con and pro at the same time is the, how the origin was structured, because you never got to really sympathize with Carol, because the movie opens up she's Vers, 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 yeah. Vers, Vers. Cheers. It's gonna be a problem for me. Whole episode. <laughs> Drink. Uh, well, it's, it's spelled verse, but in Cree it's pronounced veers. So that's, I mean, that's or they're just making shit up at that point. Let's be. 
All right. No, no, I know. I'm sorry. I'm, that's, it's like you're right, suddenly right. talking about tacos in the middle of it. Like, it's, it's suddenly, it's like, you know how, like, suddenly people put a different accent on jalapeno in the middle of jalapeno. Yes. Beer is the same way. I don't know how people do that. This is new to me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Talk to someone that suddenly they run across, like, a, like, a, like a Mexican word and, like, throw an accent on it for no reason in the middle of, like, it's, it's talking. No. With no it's hard to say jalapeno. Without asking a jalapeno or something like that, just yeah, trying yeah. to now taco. Yeah, I can say taco or tacos. Yeah, so uh, my mom's saying mojito in the middle of any conversation. Like some she gets a Spanish accent. Yeah, morning. yeah. Mojito. Would you like a nice burrito with your mojito? Peculiar. <laughs> it's very. I was like, it makes sense. Damn it! Now I'm craving Mexican <laughs> or Mexican if we're. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It's a borderline appropriation, I think. <laughs> <laughs> the accent. Uh, but but I, I really like, so I loved how they did the structure of the origin, but I guess there was no moment where you got to see her be kind of, I don't know, like a pleasant person or normal. Well, here's the thing, normal. she can still be normal as Veers, but, like, I just saw, and this is my problem with the comic book. Now, in fairness, I have not read Kelly, uh, Kelly McCormick, whoever, Kelly McDormand, something like that. Yeah, she did I, the I, reboot. I, I read Reed's whole run on it. Um, I, I it would read like, when she would show up in Spider Man and, and the Avengers and Fantastic Four. And I think that was Reed's was, run uh, when when he was Brian Reed. I think it was. Yeah, uh, which was through the Secret Avengers. Well, she came off kind of as a jerk. Like a okay, so her and Tony are very similar in that how they come off. It's just that one is a fly by the seat of your pants, and Carol at least in the comic books, was not as fly with your pants, but she still would all the time. I think for that, they were using, I think, Bendis' model at that point, which, where she was very military. Which, I'm point. fine with that, but, like, I, I guess I didn't really... There was nothing that made me connect with her right from the get-go. Like, I felt bad that she didn't have her memory, and I knew we'd get it worked out by the end, but... And, and I heard one issue... I heard someone else had an issue with that, basically said they, w- they wish they would have been, like, one other scene of her struggling on her homeward world. Oh, like on, on some kind of thing with how she's... Hel- Hera? Yeah. Hela? Hala. 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 Or on Earth, because that because they're both technically her home worlds. Yeah, but uh, but, but how there was like she was there, but there wasn't like a scene of her like normal day there. Or yeah. There really isn't. Like so, so there wasn't like a baseline. Like hey, here's a. No, there really wasn't. The movie felt like a lot hit the cutting room floor. Like it could have been a three and a half hour movie. If they had given more time to the things that they totally could have given more time to, yeah, with the constraints of we only have so much time in a day well, for to be able to show us in the theater. Three minutes, I think, was yeah, the time. it's so already they could have had a little bit. They better. could have pushed it a little bit, but, but not too much. More. No, like oh, I, no, 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 I would no. love to see a director's cut that's like three hours. I, I, I would watch I would, that. I would, I mean, I would go with two hours and fifteen minutes. I mean, I, I, I would, go two hours fifteen minutes. It really, to me, was just missing that scene at the in- intro where, like, I don't. She doesn't need to be a hero or anything. It just show, no. shows that she has some kind of compassion that makes her different from I th- the I rest. Think the story and was so streamlined, honestly, that three hours get too long. You think? I, I, I thought. It was I, I thought it was very much a point A to point B, point C. Oh. Um, now maybe how some characters showed up at each point could expand upon, but yeah. I, mean, I, I feel like it was very like, hey, we're going to go here, oh, there's this, let's go meet let's, this yeah. person, let's, like, oh, well, now we have to go to this place, it, so, if, so I don't know where you'd find another 45 minutes, but, I mean, there could, you could have a lot more with Annette Benning, the stuff on Earth, with yeah. Annette oh, Benning, I don't know if when Dr. Wendy, well, the history there. that was this whole other problem, yeah. too, which I think was tying into what you were saying, is winking at the future a little bit too much, like... Yeah. Like, Ronan looked really weird in the normal Ronan comic book green garb than the black garb. and Because I, I could tell he paced his voice. And, I was, and then he said, Ronan, dude with the big fucking hammer. Yeah, you could yeah. see Ronan, uh, but he didn't have the same garb he had from Guardians of the Galaxy. I was like, yeah. I, I don't like Ronan's outfit today. Also, <laughs> no, there's going to be a Disney Plus series. Yeah, right. Uh, <laughs> it's a friendly Ronan. Uh, uh, on, like, uh, Ronan from Here Till Now. I really... They, they set it up so that they could do another Captain Marvel movie that takes, you know, that's still in the past, but... More that's what I hope they do. They can easily do a, a Captain Marvel movie that's split. In the I would movie. like it to be more in the... I don't want them to... I, I'm fine with them not doing a Godfather Part two, where they just focus into like Captain Marvel. 
Yeah. I want to see what happens when Roman goes after her, because I want to see her kick yeah. his ass. Like, and it also leads up to the point, the Creed just had problems with everybody, which that's that was in the comic books too, but I, I feel the difference is at some point the Cree learned to work with most other races. I it mean, just Ronan didn't. Kind of, yeah. Well, well and that could always, that's a, that, that could be essentially how it ends up in the MCU too, though. Yeah. By the time she comes to Earth, hey, I fixed Cree. <laughs> yeah. Well, things are good now. Yeah. But so that to me was the biggest thing. Like the point where she's talking to her friend, I felt way more for her friend going, I lost my friend six years ago. Yeah. And I know you're here now. But like, and they said it without saying it, but so I felt a lot better about it. I was like, fucking say it. Say it. It's like, I lost my friend and she's still gone. But because that's technically what she was saying without saying it. And I was like, yeah. good for you for not saying it with the exact word. Because sometimes Marvel, I love them. It's, a little it's like, boom, cock you on the head with it. You're like, thank you. I understand now. <laughs> like, show me, don't tell me. Thanks, right. guys. Unless you're going to have Michael B. Jordan do that really awesome quote at the end of Black Panther. <laughs> then you're just like, fuck, right in the heart, man. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah, like that's, like, because he has it, he's been, yeah, anyway, that's Black Panther. Yeah, yeah check out our well, last Black uh, well, Marvel, well, Marvel well, episode. Well, that, that, that was baked into his character. So it was, it, yes. So that wasn't a, all of a sudden, it's been like just this badass guy that's been killing people, and suddenly he just gives his motivation before he dies. Which, right. I mean, he lived that motivation up until yeah. that point, and he put word to it. Yeah. Yeah. It's just different. He now, said his name. I, 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 I will say this, too. Until I saw the second time, and then I had to look it up, the Tesseract broke my brain a bit in terms of the timeline. Okay. And I had to look it up, and I did look it up here, and we'll go over it here in a second. Because isn't it... Don't they pull it out of the Arctic Ocean? Because Travis and I were talking about that. So, it was said was in Captain America the First Avenger by Johann Schmidt, a.k.a. the Red Skull. Mm-hmm. The Tesseract, or the Cosmic Cube, mm-hmm. for us comic nerds, is the jewel of Odin's treasure room, and at some point got lost on Earth. Or hidden. Or hidden. Actually, I'm, I'm, I'm wondering if it was more hidden. So, we saw that in Captain America First Avenger, and then the cube was found at the end in the 40s or maybe 50s by Howard Stark in the ocean. They never found Cap. They found the, the cosmic cube. And then from the 40s... It was through the plane before he crashed. Yes. Mm-hmm. So, okay, that was where we got confused. Because we thought it was discovered with Cap in, what was it, 2011? I thought that too, happened? but no, because I remember okay. Howard Stark found it. And okay. I was like, I don't know what it is, but it must be. Because I don't think they knew. I, yeah, the only one who knew about it was Captain America. I don't know what it is, but it's glowing. It's it glowing. Neat. Now, here's what's interesting, though, is that if you want to play like, you know, Dr. Manhattan, not to switch to DC for a second, where time existed all at the same time. Yeah. The Red Skull, meanwhile, is guarding the, was it the Soul, Soul Stone? Stone. Mm-hmm. So he's doing that. So for an, all that time, from the 40s to the 90s, it's in the hands of S.H.I.E.L.D., slash the U.S. government, because they have a partnership. Now, it's very fleeting, but in the first Avengers movie, the base they're on, it's not just a S.H.I.E.L.D. base. It's a NASA slash U.S. government slash S.H.I.E.L.D. base, which houses, I think, the Dark Energy, Project Pegasus, and something else. And they don't... Yeah, yeah, it's... I had I, I looked at the, the screenshot of, like, people running as it was collapsing. I was like, holy shit, it's right there. So... In the 90s, it was there until Captain Marvell, or, sorry, Annette Benning Marvell, took it to space and did her thing with it, and then they did that whole thing, took it back to Earth. They had it in their grasp until 20, 2012 in Avengers when Loki took the cube. And now we're on the normal path. And that, but that, that broke me for a second yeah. to think of all that. And yeah. then Thanos took it and smashed it, and it turns out there's a stone inside it, right? Right. Yes. There's the stone inside kind of... There's the stone inside of the red mist, of course, because why not, from Dark World. Sure. Because, yeah, that can happen. Um, really neat. Oh, now also, I, I think at some point, this is where it gets confusing, aren't there, weren't there two cosmic cubes? Kinda? In the comics? Well, there were, there, yes, oh, in the movies. The comics, I thought yeah, there was one point where they were looking, I think Loki was looking at it, but he's like, I, no, that's not the, I, I see that wasn't in the research I did. I, that's my memory being faulty on me. So I thought because it was like a, it was something in. The, it was just like Asgard had the Infinity Gauntlet, but it wasn't. They 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 got it back. Okay. Because remember, well, he, Thor took it at the end of Avengers to right. Asgard, but right. I thought before that, I thought 
the first Thor movie, there was. I thought the big there, blue thing was. Was there, there a was, decoy? There was a couple things there, but that's why when uh, in uh, Ragnarok, Hela's a fake. In, in oh, Earth. okay. It's all coming together now. See? There we go. Just need to discuss it with you guys, and I feel a lot better. Now, I'll hit on what you said, because I wrote this down. I was, there were some small little chronological release date problems, but the music was pretty good. Now, did you uh, did you see the, the uh, big air that I posted on uh, Facebook? Uh, no. So it, it, there's a few well, airs that they have in there, sadly. But this is one for us graphic designers. I happen to follow the guy who did all the all, does all the design work for Nine Inch Nails. Okay. And that's a bootleg shirt. Okay. Huh. He was very angry. <laughs> Somebody He's, probably just made it on set. The right. prop person made yeah. it in Nine Inch Nails. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's what he pointed out. He's like, the proper Nine Inch Nails logo, the border is the same width as the letters. Because <laughs> mm. any time you see it then it's the boot button. That laugh. I, I, no. See, yeah, I, other than that, I love the movie, and I bless you wore my logo. <laughs> 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 well, uh, yeah, so like, Just a Girl came out in the fall of 95. Mm-hmm course, Come As You Are came out in 92, which is not a problem, except for the fact that Carol was not on Earth to hear that song, because that was played at the end of the movie. Oh, true. When, when she was in the... Supreme yeah. Yeah. So that would have been in her own consciousness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. I, see, I see where you were going with this, and yes. Which which is cool, but it's also just like, wait a second, you, you don't know the song. Not well, really. And that brings me kind of to my... Biggest on the radio. Could have been. They could have been. They were listening to Waterfalls by TLC. <laughs> that kind of brings me to <laughs> actually my it. biggest problem when it comes to these types of things. A, a lot of these types of things in general, yeah. and uh, this movie specifically in a, in a few places, is like in all the movies where an alien doesn't understand what food is but can fly a jet. Mm. And they always get like, those those weird. Like, lapses of, like, I don't understand this. I'm not from here. And then, like, they turn around and then they can, like, can write Shakespeare. It's like, what the fuck? Can you fly this thing? We'll find out. And you're like, well, I, I know well, you will. Well, we know she will because she's flown them before, yeah. presumably, as Carol did. But, but here's the thing, though, too. If it mm-hmm. wasn't her as an Air Force pilot, she still would have. Because but she's Captain Marvel. Well, yeah, I, mean, I, I imagine there's like some muscle memory in there. Like oh no, 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 I'm not so making fun of. I'm just that. pointing out the fact that if, if take away the fact she's airborne pilot, yeah. that scene would still probably happen. I mean, oh yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. but you know, I mean, it's things like that where it's like you know, it always cracks me up in general. And of course, this one does a lot of that too. Where it's like, and, and I understand that, especially as as I was, oh yeah, that's kind of where like the screenwriter brain of mine kind of kicks out and understands both ways. It's like you can't constantly have your person be afraid of cars. Um and you, like, for an entire script and not understand everything because that's just fucking terrible for the viewer. But at the same point, uh, tell me something that no one would know about you. I hate when my cut, toast is cut diagonal. She, how the fuck does she know what toast is? I imagine mm. they have food on Holland. Oh, they got food on Holland, but uh, do they have toast? Do they have toast? Do they have, yeah, I mean... Why wouldn't they have toast? It's saying. delicious. They, they probably don't have avocado toast. It's the 90s. Well, yeah, but I, they probably have something that, you know, is like butter. <laughs> I'm just saying. Uh, no. but it, it's just things like that. And I don't know. And that's kind of, in general, I love that they basically turn this movie into a buddy cop, but I also feel like, mm-hmm. I also feel like they didn't earn the buddy cop relationship. Yeah. I'll that's, go with that's that. kind of my, they were definitely thrust into it. That's kind of my main mm-hmm. issue with the film is that these people had this cool buffy shorthand with each other and they just met. Yeah, I now, yeah, now that you say that I Yeah. I, I will say that was prevalent in the first screen and definitely the second screen though is that Brie Larson is very excited to be Captain Marvel and she's really good at it. I, 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 I wanna be she is. Yeah. Well okay, so say what you will about the film, I felt Ron Reynolds did the same way with Queen Lantern. The only problem is that the movie was just all around bad. Like you could tell he was excited <laughs> to be you know, watching Green Lantern, you could just be like you no could, comments his, his performance movie. is just like, guys, I I'm gonna turn to Green Lantern at some point in this movie and it's gonna be cool. Just bear with me. And then the movie keeps going. I was like, Alright guys, I'm gonna go to this planet and we're gonna do some stuff, but 
the writer strike came in, but trust me, it's I'm, I'm so happy to be Green Lantern. And then at the very end, he's like, it's the same uh, guy that directed that directed oh, Casino Royale. I know it makes me just so fucking sad. That's that's all I meant by that. It's just like when you watch him doing Deadpool, it's just like he's having fun with it. You can tell he really was having fun with it, but he just couldn't do anything with Green Lantern because it's just a bad movie, <laughs> and he wasn't a producer of it. So Again, I have no public comments. On I know, I know, I. Yeah, that, that's all I meant by that. So in the same vein, it's like Captain Marvel isn't my favorite Marvel movie, but you can just tell. Same way with Jason Momoa and Aquaman. Like, I did not love Aquaman. It's not a bad movie, but like, you, you can just tell. He's just like, I'm Aquaman. For those of you listening at home, uh, Nick is really defending himself hard on this because of how far up my eyebrows should No, yes. He made yes. a claim that, you know, Brie Larson as, as Captain Marvel is a lot like Ryan Reynolds as Green Lantern. And they almost jumped <laughs> off my face. So, he, that's why. <laughs> Why? Well, yeah, I, I am. Well, I don't. I don't. <laughs> it's okay, man. Well, no. So, so I do think yeah. this is funny. I, well, sometimes I don't know. So, this is a shocker of how the meat's made. But, like, when I post this stuff out, you can sign up for it on a Facebook group, a private Facebook group. So that way I'm not, like, emailing you a bunch of times. And you're just like, Jesus, stop fucking emailing me. It's just be like, oh, I want to do that or I don't want to do it. But sometimes the algorithm will hide shit from you. Yeah. And I was just like, Nick, you should tell you. He's like, are you sure you want me back? I want this shit all over the movie. So, which, which is funny, because like, I think the... Was it, did you do Infinity War last, or no? Uh, or was it Guardians Volume 2? No, it was Infinity was last. I was saying, it was Having like, different opinions always makes it Oh, fun. no, totally. Yeah. And, and so but that's I, why... I had a track, right? Like, I would come to the Marvel movies, and everybody would go, that's why I opened with that, because right. everybody's like, it's so good, it's so good, it's so good. I'm like... That was the worst scene in the whole movie, and here's why. Well, I, 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 I just that's, like, that's why I'm like, I can defend myself. About eight I was it was Spider Man, but that's all right. <laughs> yeah, that's why I'm like, I'm kind of like Eisenhower's just a team. Let's go, come on, the old style. But yeah, Aquaman is not good. No, yeah, no, yeah, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of things we got right. <laughs> It, it's but, yeah. It's I mean it's a, it's a great Saturday morning cotton candy. Oh, totally! Movie, like sure. okay. like if I watch a Marvel movie, I'm like, oh, this will probably be this will probably be good. Like yeah, a good movie, decent structure, things make sense. Aquaman, you're just like this is a popcorn movie. Like it's not like Wonder Woman. Well, like, I mean, most of DC has been that way sadly. since, with the exception of Wonder Woman, since since they tried to do the Marvel <laughs> thing. Yeah, and. It has just kind of blown up in their faces. I mean, but but when I go to see an MCU movie, I'm the only thing I'm expecting when I go in, regardless of which movie it is, is I'm gonna have fun. Like I know that. Yeah. And and if it's more than that, I'm pleasantly surprised. And they haven't disappointed me yet. It's I've never not had fun in a Marvel movie. And, and, and I, I will say too, I agree. Understand it because, like I said, that buddy cop. Easy repartee, and although it was earned, it was still very enjoyable. Oh, yeah, totally. I, did, I thought yeah. both both actors were having a great time, and I <clears throat> loved every second of watching them. I thought they were great. Yeah, and yeah. like structurally, you can even sit there and understand the logic of why they probably didn't expand further. It's like he has all the proof he needs. That Coulson guy turned right into an alien right in front oh, of his yeah. eyes, and Coulson's talking to him on the phone. Like he's in. Yeah, yeah. and and I I understand that, but there's a, but there's still it's just like. Where's untrusting Nick Fury? Is like, is it just because of the cat? Well, has scratched his eye out. Yeah, yeah. maybe, and, and it could just be because he's so friggin' green. Like, yeah. Coulson's his boss in this movie, which is weird. Like, was it? No, uh, I no, thought, I thought Coulson, was, Coulson was like a senior agent, and he was Coulson was a new agent. Yeah, I thought because Coulson said rookie, go check that out, and and I thought he said Fury that was the rookie. I think he said it's a Coulson. But... Oh, uh, I, yeah, I thought that. Yeah. I may have gotten that yeah. scene backwards, and I was like, "Well, there was Coulson just likes where he knows. was, there, there, and he's just like, I appreciate it, but I, I don't think management's for me. I'm happy with the job I have now, but uh, maybe talk to Fury. He might. He looks like management material with the I, pirate thing. I mean, I I also did like too the the big tell that you could tell what Coulson was Coulson is that he nerded out at him at the end of the movie. Yeah, yeah. but he's like. Did you tell? Is, is it true that that happened with your eye? And yeah. you're just like, I don't know. I just, I, I can't divulge that information. We're like, well, yeah. damn, Coulson. <laughs> like, 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 you must be feeling really sad right now. Do you have your card right here, buddy? Yeah, he does. That's a Captain America yeah, yeah. reference. To 
Wah, 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 yeah. Then, but yeah, and that's that's for the whole winking at the future thing. The oh. whole episode, he kept getting fucking eye trauma. <laughs> um, <laughs> so he kept getting a bump in the eye, and then the well, guy. yeah, they're they're yeah. yeah. Um, with I said with the eye, Ronin, the Tesseract in general, like. Well, see, the Ronin didn't bother me because I felt like that was true the to deeper. that world. It didn't. I mean, it would have bothered me if. Is somehow because of that is how Ronan got into the, the black stuff and, and the uh, what's his, the, was it um, Thanos? Yeah, no, what's what? Uh, damn, who's the guy who's because he's the accuser? Was uh, the Conqueror? When, who's the uh, No, the other guy that was part of the uh, Marvel Space Force team. Oh, uh, there's the accuser Ron Yog, Von Yard, uh, Don Rod, Don Rod, who's played by Jude Law. Right, and uh, 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 Hensu's character, who was also in Guardians of the Galaxy. Oh, Ravager. No, no, no. that was Wyatt. Shit. Yeah, that was Ravager. But, like, if they also somehow had him join Lee Pace and them splinter off, that would have been too much winking to the future for me. Yeah. So for the fact that they just were there made sense, because it was Kree. Yeah. Okay. And it didn't... Tr- so that didn't bother me at all. Actually, that's the kind of world building stuff I like. Yeah. And I guess I can get past his stupid outfit because he's a younger, a younger, less mature. Maybe maybe Ronan wasn't quite as cynical yet. And I mean, then, you see, know, I mean, which is funny because he seems really cynical. Yeah, right. He, he's, <laughs> you know, he's just I mean, like Victor, he hadn't even discovered leather jackets yet. Yeah, so right. That can happen. You know? A lot can happen in one year. Yeah. <laughs> he gets the eye patch. I think it's the eye patch. Yeah. And then he was like, I don't know, the eye patch. Well, I, mean, I feel like, yeah, if you wear an eye patch with anything but a leather jacket, you just look like a soap star. Well, yeah. I, yeah. I'm not going to lie. I was also waiting for them to go, like, if they would cut back to Nick Fury, like, in the presence of when he comes back, because we know he will. And not in Spider Man, because we don't know if that's after Endgame or before Infinity War, which I'm thinking it's before Infinity War. I just, I, I, I just feel like there's a scene where he, he's still like trying to pick something for his eye, and which would be just ridiculous. Like, like twenty years later, <laughs> 20 years, still just like, like that's the reason why he has that. Like, he just he hasn't got. Match. He just he can't make a decision, and and so he so. Did anyone else find it peculiar when they gave him the box of eyes? Just the variety of colors. Usually, if you're picking out a prosthetic eye, they're like you got brown eyes. Here's like. Eight shades of brown, and you can like decide which one is. Yeah, when well, I built my house, like, there were two trim options. That's bullshit. Yeah, there's like, here's, do you want? We got all these blues and greens and browns, and like there was an orange one in there, and like all of the rainbows yeah. of. I mean, I mean, I guess you there was like action. a green, there was like a yellow. Yeah, I mean, you I'm, I'm glad there wasn't like a right? an but, Easter egg of one of those being like right. some weird other character's traditional eye color like pattern thing. Of, uh, if you pause it, look, oh, that's tigress eye. <laughs> so, now, if you also want to get kind of nitpicky, the song at the end credits, which I really liked, and it took me a second to figure out who the fuck it was, which is it was uh, uh, Celebrity Skin by Hole. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Completely, because I remember, like, hearing that song a lot, I was like, but, like, I didn't know the band, and it's because I didn't, I, when oh, I listened yeah. to the album, I didn't care for the band. <laughs> no offense to Courtney Love, I think she's as well. She's a great murderer. So. I would say no, it's okay. I thought she was a good actor and man on the moon, but uh, that was after the murder, of course. I winked, don't see No, I know. I um, it's not funny. Kurt Cobain was the shit, man. But yeah, I thought that was, like, it was an awesome end credit segment. That air's taken out of that hole. Oh, thank you, Eric. Thank you so much. <laughs> Did it feel to <laughs> I Everything know. you say will be invalid. This thing of Kurt Cobain, right? Like, oh, you just keep taking. Who also it back. had a song in the movie? No, he yeah. had like two, didn't he? The other thing I thought, I feel like they could have reduced the beats with the cat by one or two. They got real in love with that cat joke. Yeah, but there wasn't a single time that they pulled it that it didn't work. Yeah, nah. See, because I was just like. Is that cat gonna be a flirt in at the end? And then, like, it kept dragging. I was like, no, he's not turning into it. So then, when he's dead, you're just like, yeah. But at that point, you have to do the rule of three. He attacked three times. Third time, he got Fury's eye. So you I thought you have it, to do the rule of three. Yeah, you know, yeah, that's true. You, you don't you have to. You do two and make the second a callback. Well, but he. Okay. Uh, fair enough. Fair enough. His first attack was Fury's eye. 
you you didn't know it was a flirt when he scratched you because he said no, it's just some cat scratched my eye. And and I Ben Mendelsohn's was... like no. No, that was at the end. That was a, that was at the end. That was yeah. the very end. Although Ben Mendelsohn did the no thing twice because when they yeah. first took off in the ship and there was the turbulence, yeah. and he's like, oh, yeah, is that yeah, normal? Yeah, he's like, Larson's like, yeah, it's totally normal. And it's Ben Mendelsohn's like, no. yeah. And can we speak about the fact that I, if if anything, okay. Brie Larson obviously killed it as Captain Marvel, oh, yeah. um, and would have to. But without Ben Mendelsohn's performance, that movie falls completely apart. I'll, I'll go with that. Yeah, yeah. Um, was I, I, if, if it wasn't for his performance, if, if you just had someone playing that just in any other way, just not giving it the just the the for lack of a better term, humanity. I don't know if there's scroll humanity, but. <laughs> um, that 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 rule had the one thing the supreme intelligence didn't count on humanity to to, to kind of to arc that character and make you care, make you believe. Yeah. Him yeah. yeah. Uh, throughout the whole thing, and it, it, but yet he was playing the whole character the whole time. It was the same character the whole time. It wasn't like it. It was only perception, the perception of him, because everyone told you he was such a bad guy. That you thought that was part was guy. done really, really well. Yeah, yeah. Because it wasn't like he was twirling his mustache, and then suddenly you realize, yeah. oh, he just had something in his mustache. Like later on, it's like, it, yeah, it was like. Well, I feel like some actors, it when it's written for them well, they it could still falter in the performance, and I feel like mm-hmm. it could go that way with this one. Um, not to say the writing was horrible. Like I feel like I'm going to say it wrong. Christoph Waltz, did I say it right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I felt like. Because I saw like four movies where he played the bad guy. One of them was Tarantino's own mm-hmm. Glorious Bastards. When he showed up in Django, I was just like, he's going to be a bad guy. He's in it the whole time with DiCaprio. And it's like, no. 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 And he was and brilliant in that movie. No, right. And so I feel like, but he's still... But have you seen a, uh, The Battle Angel? No, I haven't. See, okay. So here's the thing. <laughs> he's... That, that's actually uh, a good parallel to this. And I hate to spoil a little no, bit it's okay. about that. We will... Because, away. let's be honest, I don't give a shit off the plot of that movie, even the people who made it. Um, but his don't character... Don't good about it, His character at, at times are... It's like, you're made to think he's a bad guy, you're made to think he's a good guy, he's acting creepy, he's acting secretive, but like, it's never a consistent way he's acting oh. that you're perceiving it. Okay. It's always like, as the scene dictates... When, or the, like, we want you to feel like he's creepy now. Whereas, like, the entire time in this one, Ben Mendelsohn's like, hang on, let me talk to you. And Brie Larson's punching shit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> which, like, which, I mean, that whole scene where he confronts her at the at the farmhouse, like, or, 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 house in Louisiana, yeah. was just like, because even I was just like, we're going to have, we're going to talk? I mean, I'm not, I don't, I, I will say the first time I saw it, my writer brain was just trying to go, where the fuck is this going? Oh, like, yeah. I know we're going to get where we need to go, but how is this going to go? But you're supposed yeah. to think that, though, as an audience member. That right. Because Brie Larson's thinking the same thing. What the hell? Yeah. This isn't what I'm... What? Well, because she had that, that fake memory program right. into her where it's him who is doing the shooting. So, yeah. mm-hmm. obviously, she's not going to trust him. But, like, yeah, I was... The first... Because I saw it twice. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And the first time I was so... I'm like, where... What the... I, I I will say too, and this is I picked it up the second time, and I, I could be wrong. It could be it's very open to interpretation, but where she's talking, I don't know the girl's name, but Young Trouble, Lieutenant Trouble, the little girl, oh, yeah, yeah. Monica. Monica. He's talking to her. I I know, I'll get I'm gonna get to that in a second. Oh yeah, yeah. He's, she's talking to her right before she leaves, and she's like, "Hey, Lieutenant Trouble." He's like, "You remember?" And she just kind of smiles at her, and I was just like, "You don't remember her." That was just her being nice. And I was like, that's what I fucking needed at the beginning of the movie. <laughs> to, to be like, because you know what I mean? She's she's not lying to her, but she is. That's how it came off well, to and me. That's what, that's what you get, like, like you're saying, like that muscle memory, like the flashes, like she, like she instinctively felt like calling her trouble. Right. Or I also think they remember, I like, think she even said, it's like, remember I, I'm trouble, or I felt like they, someone someone mentioned it. But, but still, it's just like, I, yeah. She was there was an act of kindness and that little being nice to a kid, yeah. like yeah. the cat. Which it means. really, yeah, like, like Hellboy saved the whole thing. Yes. No, one hundred percent. But fun fact was what Eric was alluding to. 
And I didn't realize this until... Because I, I kept thinking, I was like, is that Riri... Riri, Riri Williams? Riri? Riri, no. Riri. That's not... Riri. No, it's, not no, it's Monica. Monica. Oh, no, no, I know it's not, okay. but I had to, I kept thinking as oh, I was okay. watching, I was like, is that Riri Williams who is the new female Iron Iron Man? Man. Ironheart. Well, yeah, because then Tony came back and then she became Ironheart and he became Iron Man again. But like, I was like, is that who that is? But it's really the other Captain Marvel. Yep, the one who, in continuity, took over for Marvel first. Yes. Both of them. So the other weird. Wait, the daughter or the the, the, daughter. the daughter. daughter? Yeah. Okay, because Photon was. The... Yes, the call yeah. sign. Yeah. Yeah, which I thought was really cool. So like, technically, if when they kill off Brie Larson. 20 years from now, they can bring that girl back. Well, that girl's going to be the account. same age as her mom now, because she's in modern times. Oh, uh, yeah. She's well, going to be Brie Larson's age. That's what I'm saying. The, all those sequels are going to be... <laughs> you just say Jesus. No, I said details. Oh, details. <laughs> I thought you were like, shit. Here's the thing. <laughs> the thing is, it works out both ways. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, this is like 20 years from now. Jesus. <laughs> like... <laughs> Because you know we'll both be paying, we'll all be paying to see that. Well, like, well, but I don't know if I can keep doing this shit for twenty more oh, years. Oh, and I'm not gonna lie, I've kind of given up on some of the TV shows. So. Oh, sorry, sorry. Well, Damn it. no, Arrow's sorry. ending. So yeah, yeah. yeah. I was just watching that a while ago. Like, I got so frustrated with Dark and Twisted Alley. Shield, I got frustrated with because I, lo- I love the cast, uh, but I just was like, they're. They were they're too hamstringed by the movie side, not letting them do cool shit. Although they were too hamstringed by their budget. Well, there's that too, but like Ghost Rider, I thought was done really True. well. They're also and hamstringed by the fact that the one girl dating Logan Paul, not anymore. They broke up like five, like three months after that started. Oh, you no, know, so that's how I started fo- knew who the fuck Logan Paul was. Because then, like right <laughs> after that, is when he did the whole suicide in the in the forest bullshit. Yeah. And I think the only reason why she stuck with him is for publicity's sake. Because then after that, yeah, and then I, it was one of those things where, and I stopped watching Shield. It wasn't having to do with that. It was just like, I, here's what it was. Hulu only shows the past six episodes, and I, I, it, one got cut off, and I was just like, fuck this, I'll wait for Netflix. And it's three years later, I haven't watched any more of it. So, of course, that whole last season, I think it was, is all Cree. Which is <laughs> cool, yeah. but like, if you try to line it up now, it's not really going to play out well. I, in my, I don't know. Well, it kind of does, because... They jump to the future, like, and then they prevented it, so it's it's still fine. Oh, okay, okay. They fix is a timeline fix future jump thing. Very comic booky. Yeah. We're, we're we're all good. What are those chess I, I, I will say, I, we are this far into talking about the movie. Yes. And have yet to even mention the feminist themes, which I think is actually a good thing. Because I feel yeah. like the movie was similar. It was all in the background, it behind. Was... Nothing was like, it, it, it wasn't like girl power screaming. It showed. It didn't necessarily tell. Exactly. And, it did, I, and it I thought did it did that work. really well. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, from the very first scene with her and, and uh, Jude Law, where he's telling her, don't be emotional. Oh, uh, like, you yeah. sexist pig. I was like, Fuck, you just set the oh, tone. And, yeah. and that was the the only scene where it was a little more on the nose. Mm-hmm. And the rest of it was just well, we had no matter of fact for anything else that was going on. Like, so yeah. 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 Like everything else was just this is just how it is. Like, right. Because then after that, when they're in the train car or wherever it is, that's when he goes, Remember, control your emotions because the Supreme Intelligence And it's like, oh, Supreme Intelligence will do shit, blah, 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 blah. But yeah. before that, it's like, you're a fucking douchebag. Yeah. Which, I mean, but... but which but, you but, get but, it. But, 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 but that undercurrent theme of telling a woman to control her emotions. emotions yeah. When, yeah. at the end, it was her not controlling her emotions that fried the chip and unleashed her whole power. Yeah. Right. Which... So, but that's when Carol remembered she was Carol and... Right. Well, that's because the Supreme Intelligence was dumb and was all like... Well, the Supreme Intelligence in the comic books is really dumb. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm going to show you fall like 5,000 times. Like, dumbass, she got so, back up every oh, single time. So, so I'm so glad they went the way they did but that's not the Supreme really. Intelligence. Oh, no, no, no. Okay, have you, do you remember seeing a picture of the Supreme Intelligence as a comic book? No. It's literally a giant, like, uh, no, uh, I'm trying to think of someone... 
like Chris Farley or John Candy, or just imagine my hair grew like that and it looked like my hair going everywhere. But like it's like Medusa a weird hair, yeah, Medusa hair. But I'm like a neon globby green, <laughs> and I and I just go blah 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 and I talk to people and I just order them around and that's a huge, huge, like huge giant floating head. Yeah, and you know what? It loses every time. <laughs> It, it's 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 almost like Modok, but it's it's more sad at this point. <laughs> like Modok is just like, oh, that's funny, Modok. He's a little man thing. He's just doing yeah, I stuff. I can't wait for his evolution. Oh yeah, with Pat Oswalt. It's good. Yeah, so that's the other thing. All these Disney Plus shows. I'm like, son of a bitch. Well, I, I love the one they I just mean, announced you got with me. the What If. Yeah, or I don't I don't know if they've officially announced it or if it's just been leaked. They've been leaked, I think. But you know, I did hear the second part that that's going to be a cartoon series, though. Hey, if you Which can get some of the much movie actors sense. to come in to voice the, the characters right. in the cartoon, because they're doing live action with Loki, Falcon, and Scarlet Witch. And Vision. And Vision. And I'm just like, damn it. It's just another thing i got to watch. I mean, I, I love watching it. This is why we can't have nice things. Yeah. There's TVs. <laughs> well, the nice things we will have I, as TVs in the future. I, it's fine. I, I really, I really do stand by the fact other that I, I love it dearly, yeah. but... I still stand by the fact, and I've said this, I think, anytime I, I can, Spider-Man would work way better as, like, a TV show, that the finale is the in-theater movie. Uh, Sony is apparently developing a some in-universe in yeah. Spider-Man show of some kind. See, but here's here's the thing. Last time I said that, and Nick Ray has not seen Spider-Verse yet, so okay. it's, it's really good. It's, but, it is really good. But I will say, like, when that first came out, I saw the trailer, and I was like, nope. Nope, I want to like it because Miles is in it, but nope, because fuck Sony. Yeah, that was they my not reaction good. too. Yeah. yeah. And then it won an Oscar or something, got nominated for an Oscar. It, it's, it's aggravatingly and good. it should have been nominated for Best Picture with Black like Black Panther. I understand. Black Panther. It really, I mean, yeah. I mean, they have a fucking Spider-Man Christmas album. They have two of them, actually. In the movie, it's glorious. They make fun of Spider-Man 3, which is the worst fucking movie ever. Uh, yeah, he's like, yeah, you know me. I had done this. I say the same thing. I showed clips from the, the live action Tobey Maguire movies. So you get a sense like, oh, we're probably in the Tobey Maguire movie universe. Um, um, and then he goes, and I even uh, have a Christmas album. And then and then there was that one time I did some dancing. And he showed the same dance moves, but he's just wearing the Spider Man costume. He's like, we don't like to talk about that. And you're like, thank well you done. so That's much. Like, well done. Well done. Right. Yeah. But, but to get to that point, I remember they had the clip of Jake Johnson as Peter Parker. And I love Jake Johnson. Yeah, I, he's my boy on New Girl, and he's just funny in almost anything he does. But like when I heard him, I was like, "You don't put a shlomo as the voice of Peter Parker." But then when you watch the movie, you're like, "Oh no, my boy Peter is a shlomo in this movie." <laughs> Jake Johnson, Jake Johnson, actually entertaining in the Mummy reboot. See, okay, I forget. I, I forget. I heard an interview with him, and he was talking about, "Hey man, I like you, but the Mummy sucked." And he's just like, "I don't care." Keep that fucking shit to yourself. I had fun making it. Fuck you. <laughs> and it, 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 like, because he's like, so I don't ask people what they think of my movies or anything anymore. Yeah. I just like, you're a fan. Great. Let's get this shit over with. Uh, thank you for being a fan. He just walks away because he's just like, not I, a great I, movie, but he was yeah, good in it. Yeah. He's like, was the movie good? Who am I to say? But I had a lot of fun making that movie. Yeah. I got to run and scream and stuff. I, I got paid having fun, and that was. <laughs> and I got job. to meet Tom Cruise. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 I, well. Mm, mm, mm. There's Tom Cruise, there's Tom Cruise. I know we were getting yep. serious, yep. but... Oh, yeah, lay it down. One, the... <laughs> the beef. The beef the there we go, the, the beef. The, the beef. beef. For those of you at home, Nick just took off his shirt. So, <laughs> it felt like it was set in the 90s for no other reason than nostalgia and to be able to sell... The fact that nostalgia sells damn much these days yeah, like, to the point that's like quit it like I have seen the Crossfire commercial enough because I was 12 when it was out I don't ever need to see it again but it shows up in my Facebook feed twice a day like all the, the gold, shit like Goldbergs. if you were a 90s kid you might remember these things I'm like I remember those I don't even need to open that because I was a 90s kid remember Fireball and, and, yeah it, it's just all it's everywhere and it's like mm, it's good old days it's Jesus content to create not not movie wise because you have to actually you know you have to go back and build all of that shit again. The Radio Shack and the yes, yeah, yeah. and but it it felt like it was 
just like the I, 90s felt like a marketing ploy from the music to the locations that they the sets like i'm not gonna lie the first time i saw it, it the blockbuster thing bothered me just a little bit and i didn't know why because then i liked the nerd in me was just like you have the hud sucker proxy in the background they, i mean fucking a they no did a really good that. job with it well, right but like usually you're expecting oh is it gonna be all like uh with disney movies and I was like, nope, no, 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 no. Yeah. The True Lies was the standard. Yeah, the True yeah. Lies is the one she shoots yeah. down. Like, I but, thought that was good. But here's the thing. My dad, who, when we saw it the second time, was right next to me, lost his shit when the Blockbuster sign came out. Because he's like, ah, Blockbuster! And you need to, like, the Brendan Fraser, like, <laughs> thing. Like, I, like, I'm just trying. He really didn't do that, but, like, but, like that's how funny he thought it was. He, he, yeah. I, so that landed with him. And I was just like... Yeah, everyone right. likes that joke, and so that's, I understand why they have it. They like to call it a four quadrant movie. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, yeah, Dad's not listening to this, but if, if you ever, I'm sorry. <laughs> but, 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 but I mean, I'll tell you what though. When um, the blockbuster though, when they did that initially, that was the teaser trailer. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it worked for me big time in the teaser trailer. Yeah, I, I will. Um, yeah, I'm the best so. Too. But also, like, that was, like, the one 90s reference in the teaser trailer. They kind of did that, and then they got it out of the way, and then they went into everything else. Yeah. So it really worked for me that way then. So as, as an extended sequence, you know, it wasn't as Brendan Fraser for me. Um, but I wasn't it's anti nice that. Way. Well, I, I wasn't anti either, but it was just more like, oh, you're completely, you're hitting yeah. hard the whole, like... Well, I mean, they I have was, to, like, if it's, I mean, that's sort of like complaining about a movie that's shot in the 20s, like, there were flapper dresses and fedoras, and, like, oh did you God, see the cars guys, they were well, driving, like, like everything felt like shows up in every fucking scene. Fuck that Charleston. Like, like, I, yeah. but, but I also feel like, I mean, luckily they didn't try and do too much. I mean, granted, like, like Nick said, you know, some of the, they kind of cherry-picked their songs, but it wasn't like, I don't know. Everyone wasn't running around talking about the Buffalo Bills or some bullshit. You know, it wasn't like. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> that's a very unique thing to just target in on is the Buffalo Bills. But right, but, but, but I mean, that's exactly right. That's what else we're talking about. I don't, I don't support. Yeah, but but <laughs> but that's a very specific thing that was you know it was like for a, t- a time in a place. But, I thought it was. It was just enough. Like, I didn't think it was distracting. And it... Like, I noticed it, it. That was the only thing I... I mean, I noticed it, because I was like, ah, oh, Radio Shack, well, yeah, phones. hey! Yeah, and I think maybe that sequence had a little too much of that, because they did kind of hit you. That sequence. But yeah. I think that that was... The Welcome to world, Earth. Like, like, yeah, like, the, the world building. This is the setting. Yeah, like, yeah. this is it. This is... I mean, they didn't, like, it was a showing moment with the Game Boy. I was just like, uh... And I was like, wait, what are you doing? I, I did yeah. love the loading files on a computer. Oh, man, yeah, the Windows 3.1, like, <laughs> what's it so, doing? I had Windows 3.1 yeah. on my computer. Uh, well, I like, I, and I like that Samuel Jackson played it like, it's, uh, it's loading. Like, that, it's Windows every day for him, yeah. Yeah. For, for her and, and even... Oh, also, mad props to the joke is like, it's like, Basic. What, what, did, what, did, what did they say it was? Where her ba- Marvel's base is hidden? It's like it's basic physics and velocity. Oh, it's and it's, it's 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 basic physics. Orbit. Orbit. It's, it's an. Or, you're my science guy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, 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 then, and then he's like, I can get that. My science guy. Like I was, just, I was just like, I was like, well done, well done. And it was sad that he, he got blown away. But, yeah. but was that was that a uh, what was the need of him to sacrifice himself? I because I, 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 I mean I thought it was a, clearly a sacrificial. Yeah, moment. there's no way. Yeah. There's no way you go into that thinking you're going to get out of it, especially if everyone else is leaving you to he, go up into space. I think he knew that. Maybe but I, I don't know. I mean, that's that's an interesting point. I, I would say that. I mean, like he, he could. They could have called a different diversion to get the science guy on the plane because I mean, there was enough room on that board for Leo to be on it. Right. Like yeah. Yeah. God, enough with the fucking nineties nostalgia. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and actually, you know what? Yeah. That would be the sequel is with Nick Fury and Goose. And then doing that. I, I would I, watch I, a sequel if it was Nick Fury. I would watch a, a sitcom. A Nick Fury and Goose. Summer. What, what, what you, know, you, you didn't know is you felt that that body, show. the body count thing. 
You they thought the buddy cop the was morning. Nick and Captain Marvel. It turns out it was Nick and the Flurkin the whole time. <laughs> Nick and the Flurkin. Nick and the Flurkin. Yeah, this is actually just Turner and Hooch. That's all that's happening. Wait, wait, wait. Gary and the Flurkin, because no one calls him Nick. Yeah. Yeah, you got to you got it out yeah. first. But that's why I was just like, Flurkin, uh, like, that, that was a good bit too. The, what does everybody call you? Oh, what do you call your mother? Fury. What does she call you? Fury. Then <laughs> <laughs> uh, they, they switch around. It was like when you talk to your mom. What do you say? Like Fury. Yeah. <laughs> like he just calls everyone his family. Yeah. Fury. Everybody is family. Like what, what does your mother call you? Fury. That well, when you're talking to her, what do you call her? Fury. <laughs> it's like and with that. I, I didn't realize how much of the movie he was going to be in initially. Oh, yeah. And, I mean, like he said, it's a straight-up buddy cop movie between the two of them. But, like, look at how good that de-aging was on Nick Fury. Yeah, yeah man. And especially if you compare it to Aquaman's dad. <sighs> yeah. Which I, I, I didn't know who the hell that actor was for the entire, like, sequence. And until they showed him, like, in modern times, I was oh, like, like Jango Fett. I got it. See, I got it right away because I was just like, he should have looked like Jango Fett at that point. I, it was I 20 don't years ago. see him in a lot of movies, and I'm, yeah. I'm not saying he hasn't because I looked on IMDb, he's been doing movies. Oh, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. Seen but I don't. Films. He hasn't been like he's been like more like a side, a very small part in the movies. Yeah. And so when he showed up as Aquaman's dad, I was like, Jango Fett, is that Jango my boy Jango? And then like when you because yeah, they also did a lot of far wide shots. Yeah, and then, so then once weird. you have the baby, then it's closer. And I was like, yeah, that's totally Django Fett. There's like a lot of weird Vaseline oh. shots or something on it. Oh. But like, it was one of those things where they needed, a, yeah, he should have looked just like he did as Django, but that's just that. Well, I mean, so there's a part of me that wants yeah, he, there's Alec Baldwin no, to I mean, be. Lucasfilm had to have all that digitized for God's sake. But he's too sick. It's like, yeah. you know, there's no way to really de-age when you, you just go a little bit too much. Hey, just give, just give him a uh, vertical stripe and, uh. Have them stand in a proper way. Just shoot, just shoot everything from a down or from an upward angle. I, I mean, Nick, Nick, downward angle, you just they film mm. that movie in Atlantis. They can computer generate. Oh things. yes, I'm Could sorry. Could they just I shoot mean, him a special suit that's like green on the sides? So how did they shoot the first the twenty screen? minutes of Cap? <laughs> Actually, they used to stand in when he was a skinny guy. I, I thought because Joe Johnson, I think they photoshopped his head because Joe Johnson is like John Favreau, very much like an old school guy. He worked on Star Wars. Mm -hmm. And so he's all about practical effects. So I think they had a stand-in. They did the scene, like, I think five times. Like, one with nothing. Like, so Bucky's talking to nothing. Then they had one with, I think, Chris Evans and the skinny guy. Then just Chris Evans and then just the skinny. Yeah. It's, I, I'm, I'm guessing that's how it is. Now, after that, Chris Evans like, I don't want to do that anymore. <laughs> I'm a busy man. I got, like, three Captain America movies to shoot. I got a cameo over here. I got Winter Soldier over here. And we're prepping for Infinity War. <laughs> So I'm I'm guessing because I know fucking Robert Downey Jr. doesn't wear the suit. He also yeah, because his lines fetch him be in your piece, but yeah, he doesn't wear the suit anymore. It's, yeah, and then I yeah because I think was it Don Cheeto was wearing the suit in the second movie halfway through, and he's just like, but he, he didn't have any scenes with him right away. He's like, why is he why does he not wear the suit? So in the last scene, they're not wearing the suit together. Yeah. <laughs> I was just like. But it also shows you how awesome the effects guys are because that whole scene is just them standing there talking to each other with nothing else which, there. Yeah. Which is which. such a crock of shit what they get paid. Oh, yeah. Especially because one of the effects houses that did one of the movies that won the Oscar uh, went bankrupt right after the Academy Awards and like no one on the team got paid for the movie because they were so far in debt. Was it one of the Final Fantasy movies? Oh, I think, wow. I think, yeah, I, mean, I think it was, there was one this year. There was one just oh. a few ago. Oh, man. And so it's like, these people aren't getting paid. They're so, paid on a random bit of weird knowledge, so I'm a huge Rock and Boinkle fan, June Foray... That's not random at this point. Yeah, it's not random, but how it ties into this is, okay. it came off ran in my mind, I feel it's weird, because I'm one of the people that love and hate the animated, best animated film, Cabot Award, but she fought for that, because she's like, you're not nominating these films... And they need to, they deserve to be nominated for a best picture. You guys keep passing over for this other dribble. So I think there should be an Academy Award for Best Animated Picture. So she campaigned for it. I thought it was one of those weird little because hmm. there's one of those things that was like, I hate that they have that. It's a it's a pity prize. But then there are other times where I'm like, well no, I'm glad they got something. It's like a weird Well like the one was it the one that won last year? Oh shit, what did it last year? Was it record no, no. Record, two years ago. Zootopia? No. Uh, that was, no, that was two years ago. Yeah. Everything was two years ago. That's the, the um, oh 
shoot, it was the one... Because I knew Kubo was up against Utopia. And it, was like the, it was the one about Afghanistan. The bread maker or something? The bread? Oh, God. I don't remember that one. I, but, I mean, it's on Netflix, I want to say. It's a, is it? Oh, okay. Right, something or other. And it is fucking amazing storytelling. I, there's one French movie, and I don't think it was nominated. Uh, it, it was like a... It's a French movie about it, these foxes, and one of them starts trying unintentionally starts taking care of a chicken, which he should be eating. And the bigger foxes, and it, that the trailer I saw, it's I, and there's no real voices in it. It's just all like <gasps> it's almost like Mr. Bean. It's all like gasps and that kind of stuff. And I don't remember the name of it. I just remember every time I, I look it up, it's still not released in the states yet, and it makes me really sad because it looked amazing. The storytelling was very clear and concise for like four minute scene that you saw. But, um, the breadwinner. The breadwinner. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Please check that out, what, everyone. What's the one that won years before that? It was like the Irish movie, The Secret of the Kells. Yes, that was yeah. really good. Was it good? I, I think that's on Netflix. Yeah, it is. Or it, was. Or what? It's one of those ones I had in my queue, and I, I had Netflix seen it. Netflix or Amazon? Because I added it to one of my watch lists. I just can't remember which I, one. When I watched it, it was on Netflix, but that was a couple years ago. Yeah. Uh, well, everybody. We have been talking for a little bit. Uh, do we have any final thoughts? Or an unfinal thoughts? We can keep this train going. I, I'm, I'm indifferent. It was enjoyable watching a Pulp Fiction Samuel L. Jackson in a movie again. Yes. yes. <laughs> oh, Debating food. To bring it back. What? To... Discussing food. Yeah, discussing Samuel food. Jackson. <laughs> what was... There was a meme about Captain Marvel. And probably. he took a clip... Uh, it was probably by some incel motherfucker. No, no, no. It was actually <laughs> genuinely funny. It had nothing to do making fun of whatever... It was making fun of the fact that John Travolta turns around and shoots the one dude. Oh, I, I posted it. Oh, was that you? Yeah, yeah. What, what, what was that? Was it uh, for Captain Marvel? No, it was Dungeons and Dragons. Never mind. <laughs> JK. Uh, JK. Well JK. Funny, but not, you have a, not related. Not John Travolta a, meme funny. You have a nervous passenger in your backseat. What do you want to do? I want to talk to him and call him. Roll. It's a one. Right. Yeah, I was just like, that, that's that's <laughs> <it's up> to, <laughs> you, shoot, <laughs> you shoot him in the face. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> yeah. He's calm. Yeah. But yeah. by the way, I like that his F bomb was not an F bomb, it was Mother Flurkin. Yeah. Yeah. Which it, it took the first time I was like, they got an F bomb from Samuel in the movie and then and then my dad was like, No, it was Flurkin, Mother Flurkin. I was like, well, they're allowed one F bomb. It's PG thirteen. They they are, but right. it's Disney, so I don't know if they ever throw that. Okay. Well, they, they're supposedly saying when Disney and Fox they they officially complete. I think was it March twenty third or twentieth? Ah ha ha ha! Um, it's twentieth century Fox. Oh, actually, it's the company is officially twenty first century Fox. I didn't know when they changed that. I thought that was kind of cool because it's just so cool. I just think it's so neat, you guys. But well. <laughs> You guys, this is amazing. I love your story. Everybody <laughs> just loves the 21st century. I don't know where I was going. Oh, no, Deadpool. They, supposedly Deadpool, they're going to do another Deadpool for sure. And they seems like Deadpool makes a lot of money. We're well, going to have it totally be R. Deadpool or X-Force? Well, I heard the X-Force got killed off for the moment. They're waiting to see how the merger, how Iger wants to go with it. But yeah. They killed the X-Force in the movie. <laughs> Like, which that really, I did have. They brought cut. Peter back, though. Yeah. <laughs> which okay, but here's the thing. Okay, okay, that okay. Was well done. I, I I really love that movie, but so growing up, like it's a character that I just I liked, but I didn't like. I didn't know anything else about him. The Shatterstar, yeah. and so when he shows up, I was like, "Fucking a Shatterstar, Domino, and Deadpool and Cable, X Force is almost kind of there." And then he fucking just dies, and I was just like, <laughs> "Just because Shatterstar son of a bitch. actually in the last." years turned out to be a really interesting character. Well, so I heard that later, and I was like, fuck you, guy! But, but, but as a kid, you're just like, Shatterstar, X-Force, yeah. and yeah. then he just dies, and I was like, right out of the gate. Yeah, dual right out of the gate. Yeah, dual sword. Also, I, I, I forget who pointed it out last time we were talking about this, but another little fun fact, if you've not heard of that episode, when they're putting the people on the wall, they put like some like a knife through their face, the only one who doesn't get a knife in their face is Domino. Oh. Which is kind of ooh foreshadowing that they're going to die. <laughs> Which I thought, eh. yeah. isn't that a neat fact, everybody? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> one, thing, <laughs> one thing we'll say about uh, Captain Marvel, though, uh, Wait is, to get home, man. Wait to get home. <laughs> is I feel like this was one of the better third act 
max of any of the Marvel movies, where it was clear, it made sense, it wasn't fighting 4,000 nameless, faceless things and something big. It's more perfect. personal. It was. And, and you could follow the fight. Yeah, I'll go with that. And, yeah. and it, the fight kind of had layers to it as it unveiled itself, mm-hmm. and as she claimed her power, destroyed the shit out of everything. And based, and then when Jude, Jude Law tried to goad her into, all I could think of when, when Jude Law tried to goad her into oh, that yes. fight, of because he knew he couldn't win, gun versus her power, mm-hmm. so he tries to goad her into a fair fight. Oh, fuck that guy. Yeah. It, I was it, it, you know what that made me think of is, um, and uh, sorry, listeners, make it a little political here. Is Charlie Kirk fucking trying to get everyone to debate him? Like okay. He's trying to go after AOC and everybody about saying like, like, oh, you think you know economics? Debate me on socialism. I'll give ten thousand dollars to your campaign, and they're, and to all these women candidates. And it's like, okay. and then his like, and then you know her saying, I have nothing to prove to you. And just like, yeah. Well, it's just like, what well, I keep trying to tell people. If only like, AOC could really do that. Yeah. Seriously. But it's like one of those things. Where it's like, I. I that was to me really registered of, of all these men who yeah. can't win trying to be like, well, why don't you fight me fair kind of thing. It's like, yeah. Why? And then she literally drags him to his shoes. Oh, yeah. That was so satisfying. <laughs> yeah. Like, you deserved it, you asshole. Also, I like how he was kind of being a baby about it. Like, yeah. I mean, again, it's a master shot. But, like, you can see him kind of flaming about him, like, oh, I was just like, oh, you law. Also, I love that, like, after she blasts him, she comes walking up, and he's, like, expecting her to help him up. She oh, just yeah. drags his ass. Yeah, right. Yeah. 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 Like, he oh. takes, offers the hand, and yeah, she's he's like, like, so like you gonna help me up? And then cut to, no. No. Drag. No, drag. Not drag, yeah. Ugh. Oh, that was so... All right, so one last thing to throw out there. Do you think that Benny Mendelsohn will come back for, will he will be the eventual bad guy in the second big major movie, like Secret Major, where the Skrulls take over all the superheroes and have been replacing them for years? Well, you're assuming that's what they're going to do. I mean, no, I, I'm saying, like, do, you, do you think that's something they might go down the line? Because Benny like, Mendelsohn does play a great bad guy. It is. And I wonder, too, or it, it could... So I, they made a point, and I, I feel like they did it on purpose, but he told his daughter when they were running into the shield ship, Pegasus ship, to cover her eyes, and the mom kind of failed to do that, and she saw him. Oh yeah, fail. she saw him. Kill oh some yeah, she saw him. Some people. I wonder if that will tie in to something later down the line. I'm, I'm probably playing way too much, but I feel like they made a point to like call it out, and yeah. they very plainly showed it. Oh yeah. And so I mean, not I knew it wasn't going to happen in this movie. But that would I be felt very like, cool. It would be, but I, I I'm probably putting way too much into that one scene. I mean, I, I feel like them knowing everyone expecting, uh, all the comic nerds expecting Secret Invasion to be next helped lead them to why they swerved this one. Maybe. Because I think they don't want you to know what to expect. And I didn't. I was too good. But I'm going, yeah. even going into like Phase 4, I think, I mean, I think that, I think Marvel really wants you to not know what is coming because you've known what's been coming through the last three phases of Thanos. That's Thanos true. is coming. Thanos is coming. Thanos is coming. I, I think they don't want to beat a drum for a little while. Yet. I I'm, I'm fine with that, but I mean, if they get the Fantastic Four, it, it which and they will probably phase five maybe it will change the game because so yeah, the Guardians introduced MCU to the cosmic universe. But that's kind of un- permanently on hold for the moment with because of gun, and then so what else? And they have Captain Marvel as the bridge for that. But like, what else do you have? Well, Fantastic Four does all kinds of shit in space oh, yeah, in different dimensions. The well, we, so got we got the Eternals coming. Yeah, the Eternals are coming. But I think outside of that and the, like Marvel, I think said they wiped their slate clean. Well, well, they didn't. They just told us publicly. So um, no, Master. Kung Fu is coming. Is it? I thought that was a TV show from Marvel. No, not Master Kung Fu. It was it Shang Chi? Was it Master of Kung Fu? Was it the, the whole name? I think so. Because uh, they just announced the director today. Oh, did they? 
Hmm. And then Spielberg. Black Witch. <laughs> they have the director for Black Widow. They said it's not going to be R rated, and apparently Emma Watson is being courted oh. for it. Oh. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm so, I mean, things I really, are slowly starting to leak, yeah. but I'm not. Really not I, I think we talked about this before. I want it to be them trying to clear the letter. I want Hawkeye hmm. to show up in the movie that Emma Watson is the Black Widow, and, and it needs to be Karen Egerton. <laughs> I just think that's what has to happen, and I want him to have an accent for no reason. And a Gerard Butler shows up for no reason with a completely different accent. Yes. And can't, maybe this is a movie where we make him deaf. Deaf Hawkeye? Yeah. So that's why he has the accent? Yeah. <laughs> like that explains it? You're not, so, you're, so you know what would be funny? You're, he are tries, you British? No. Why? I'm <laughs> deaf. <laughs> No, so here's the thing. This is this is how it gets fucking trippy, right? At the beginning of the movie, but like you see the explosion or whatever, because I think he gets an explosion and one of the things goes off near his ear and that's what yeah. makes death. He talks and you have Jeremy Renner do the accent for a while. <laughs> and when it happens, he just does his normal accent. Yeah. Is He's it like, man is make it for man. That's how I talk is about it. Is it bad that the Karen Egerton I see is the one that was in the for the trailer. Oh, for, for Rocket Rocket Man. Man. I think he's going to be phenomenal. Like, right? now I see, like, super yeah. sequiny Taron oh, Egerton with, like, them. an Emma Watson in her Harry Potter robes, and I'm like, so, yeah. So, I haven't seen Bohemian Rhapsody yet, and here's, the, and, and so this is the weird thing, and, and, and my wife was like, do you want to see Rocket Man, but you want to see Bohemian Rhapsody, but it's very two-sided, because all those movies are the same, same plot as they have some kind of, you know, the drug problem, whatever, they overcome adversity, and we have one shot where they're at a big concert at the end, or, and usually the movie starts off right before that concert, yeah. so like... It frames. No, right, totally, totally. Yeah. And, and here's the thing, it's a tired device, but like, the Bohemian Rhapsody thing bothered me in that, because I love Queen, but like, I remember Sacha Baron Cohen mm-hmm. dropped out of that movie saying, Queen just wants to make a, race, make a lot of money off the records, they don't really care about actually telling Freddie's story accurately. And that irked me because well, I, I saw the movie, business. and the movie is basically a biography of each of their songs. See, that's what I heard too, and, and that's why I was just like, I have no like. I hear he does a wonderful job as Freddie Mercury, and, yeah. and I can tell in the trailer like he looks like he's going full tilt, and yeah. that's awesome. I that's I think that's now, the difference you know between the guy those who came in. The, the, the guy who's directing the Rocket Man is the guy that they he brought replaced. in to replace Brian Singer. That's and funny. Fix that's, uh, that's ironic. Because, but, but that, that's the thing. It's like, look, I know you're selling your life story to make money, make more money on the records, make money for the studio. I completely understand that. But when it feels so, like you go in for the wrong reason, stuff, Queen stuff. has announced they're, they're looking into making a sequel to Bohemian Rhapsody. What the fuck? Oh, yeah. Is it going to be like American Idol? Well, well the second about. one is going to be about Freddie because the first one was just about Queen. And how good they were and how Freddie... <laughs> I'm trying not to have any aneurysm over oh. here. <laughs> like, like, it's a... No, so, so Des- that's no, uh, Shang Chi. Destin Daniel Creighton has been announced to direct it. Oh, okay. Who's currently directing the movie Just Mercy, a film he wrote that stars Brie Larson and Michael B. Jordan. Oh. Uh, so. Oh, you know, all right. Can can we also we haven't talked about this? Not really. We had talked about the opening. We didn't talk about the Stan Lee cameo. Uh, With oh. a loving nod to Kevin Smith. Yeah. I I yeah. meant to uh, to say something about that because I mentioned in. I forget if it was Guardians 2 or Infinity War, that the, I think it was the Guardians 1, because Stan was getting up there in years, he was like 82 at the time, maybe, but he was in Atlanta, and they were shooting something, maybe it was Spider-Man, and while they were there, like, he was on set, and they filmed his cameo, and they were like, let's get some more. So they just shot a bunch of cameos, yeah. So that he didn't have to keep coming back every time and doing them. And so, like, seeing that cameo, I was like, oh, they are still gonna have him around. And so it'll be like, you're, you're, he's 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 Spider Man, yeah. yeah. Which, right? And and but he, uh, so I watched the video today of Kevin talking about. It. Apparently, it's one of the last things mixed sound wise into the movie because he called him like four months ago, saying, hey. Um, you know about Captain Marvel? Yeah, I love Captain Marvel. And they start talking about Stan Lee. And he didn't broach it. He said, by the way, I'm calling you for a reason. The reason I'm calling you is because uh, he explained this breakdown and all that. And he's like, and he's like, oh my God. He's like, I'm also all calling you. He's like, Stan was very weak that day we were shooting. And the lines out loud enough for our mics to pick up. 
do you have any audio footage from Mallrats of him saying his lines over multiple takes? And he's just like, I mean, I'm not disrespecting man. Man's not a one take wonder. We hit it multiple takes, but <laughs> Universal has that. You need to talk to them. And he's like, thank you. I'll reach out to them. And so apparently that's actual footage from or audio footage from him from back doing multiple takes. No, sure. oh, saying wow. his, oh, wow. whatever his line is. Suppose, yeah. And so, yeah, and of course, yeah, because I saw the, I didn't even see the movie yet. That was on Thursday night. I think you were the one that I saw the movie. That's what it was. He was reading his lines for Mallrats. Yes. Was yeah. it just Excelsior True Believer or something yeah. like that? Yeah, it's like, yeah, Excelsior True Believer, something like that. And he was just saying it over and over again. You can still hear it kind of faintly in the background. Yeah. Also, her smiling at him was not supposed to happen. She was supposed to look at him and kind of snarl, like, are you whatever? And he just keeps going not? over... But instead, she, it was like a weird outtake, and they're like, "Well, we gotta keep that in the movie. It's yeah. too adorable." And I was just like, "I mean, honestly, they, in my opinion, they should do the Stan Lee thing in the next two movies to finish up the phase." That's well, they, they said they're they doing the Endgame. Stuff. Oh, they are. Yeah. Okay, good. Is well, not the cameo. I'm talking about like the opening credits. Oh, oh, oh yeah, because oh, cameos. Oh. I mean, fuck. If you can just put a billboard with Stanley's face on it in every movie, I would yes, like, be okay with that. Stanley should be an Easter egg in every Marvel movie that's ever released from now until forever. Yeah. I'm on record saying. That. Or, or if they would just well, be like, now you are. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I was gonna say, and, and I will go on record. And I was like, oh no, there's a microphone in front of me. The record well, is. Look, I will say this on microphone. Give me a microphone. <laughs> <laughs> I will do it. <laughs> I'll wait here for one. You don't believe me, Nick? Give me your microphone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so at a random tangent, I saw Cat Power at Mumford and Sons the other night, and they I'd never seen this performed before. They have she held both microphones and sang into them at the same time, and I didn't know what the fuck that was about. One of them is an effects has, and... has effects on it, and so when you're performing live, a lot of times if you have two mics that are kind of like this, you're singing into this one and it's clean vocals, and you sing into this one and it has the effect that it should be up, it should be on the chorus. And a lot of times they'll also have an effect pedal down here, so the effect that's on the chorus is here, and then you have your clean vocals, and then the ah. effect that's on that chorus is here. Okay. And, vocals. and then you can blend them both. Okay. I, I did not know that. And now I feel that is a way to wrap up Cats and Marvel. What is the universal uh, translator? Uh, uh, wait, wait, yeah, the universal translator like that? Oh, okay, no, no, I'll end on one more weird non, uh, non sequitur story. So one of my favorite jokes in the new season of DuckTales, or the first season of DuckTales, is they had Don Cheadle. Uh, you know what, it's Marvel related. Don Cheadle shows up, and he does the voice of Donald Duck. And what they do is they take a Barksian translator, and they shove it down his throat. And a Barksian, Carl Barks is the creator of, of Spook and the Duck. So it's like a nice little Barksian, ah, whatever. And then when he talks... He talks very confidently. He's like, this is what we're going to do. We're going to storm the money then, take Magicka down, and rescue Huey, Dewey, and Louie. And then we're going to save Uncle Scrooge because ducks don't back down. And you're just like, did he always talk like that? <laughs> <laughs> and that's my little quote. All right. So a uh, big thank you to Nick Ray, Eric Sandberger, uh, Becky Horseman for doing uh, this episode of Captain Marvel for the Good, the Bad, and the uh, Do you guys have anything to plug again before we leave? No. Okay. I'll just remind people to uh, check out my website, ericsternbreaker.com. It's, uh, it's got two more things published this week, and lots of stuff on there, including how the, the spec script on how I would introduce Fantastic Four into the Marvel Universe. Uh, awesome. Do you have anything, Bex? Not, not that I, I came unprepared. Okay, it's okay. All right, well, everybody, thank you guys so much, and then, uh, yeah, stay tuned for the next episode. <laughs> All right. Jeez! You're a creep! Go away! We're having a good time until you start up, cheapers! Uh, go have some coffee with cream or something! Because I'll tell you something! This is a happy place! <laughs>